All right, everybody. Uh, so in this video, we are going to show you how you can find the maximum and minimum values, the optimum values within a function uh, given in, in MATLAB. And the nice thing is you actually already saw this in the last homework. If you saw and if you remember in one of the homework problems, you were asked to use the fmin bound, bound function, which does exactly that. It finds the minimum value of a function within a bounded window of, of, of space. And this is good for a single uh, uh, independent variable function where you only have one unknown that you're trying to find the optimum value for. Uh, and this is in this case finding the minimum value. So uh, the general format of this is you can say x uh, is it's going to output x min given, but it can also give you the value at the max at that minimum value. And you just have to enter in the function that you're going to give, comma, the bounds of that function uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, equation, and so it's I believe the format is going to be x1 comma x2, and that's it. And so it'll search the bounds of intervaling between those two values. Let's test this. Let's find the minimum value of a function. Let's create a. I'm going to do another honest function just for the sake of it. Uh, rest is equal to at x. And we'll say in this function, we'll give it a value of x squared minus uh, x, um, let's say, um, x to the fourth times sine of x. Eh, that sounds good. OK. Um, so let's go make that our function. So I'm going to go over to the command window here and just run it through here. I want to see what this kind of looks like. Um, I used Betty in the last video. We're using rest here. Let's see what this function kind of looks like. Ooh, it's so unhappy with us. Um, okay, yeah, this is going to be a pretty ugly plot, but that's okay. Let's see, see how well this works. Um, okay, so that's that's the function. So let's go from one to uh, let's look between uh, bounds, and I'll ask it to find the minimum between. I guess uh, we'll say nine and three three and nine okay so clear off all that ugliness and so we we're going to find f min bend of rest from three to nine and it'll give us an answer of 8.2999 um, if you looked at that plot f plot of rest that um, and you can see here 8.299 looks pretty close to what that is um, if we wanted to see how accurate that was, we could actually take our rest function and just enter in the value that we got, 82999, enter in, and we got the negative value of negative point, uh, uh, negative 4,227. Uh, uh, so that is, I'll clear this, how we can get the minimum value of this vector. Um, which is, oh, oh, this is not vector, but of this function, uh, which is, I think, very straightforward. Now, I'm going to go back to the F plot, and it really doesn't like this function, but that's okay. Um, what if I wanted to know this maximum here within these uh, two windows? I'm going to go from 9 to here, and I want to see what this maximum value is. Um, you'll notice there is no F max bound. So how can we find the minimum? Well, what if we actually just plotted the negative of rest. Oops, we'll have to put a little at symbol in front of that. Unexpected MATLAB operator. Oh, don't get mad at me. At of x negative x. There we go. And now you'll see that we got the inverse function of this plot. And in this case, you can see you got a nice negative value here. And we can find, which was actually the maximum, and then this became now the maximum. So if we ran the f min bound of from 3 to, in this case, 7, now because we just want to know what this maximum is, um, we'll just have to do that using this negative notation here for this function. So I'm going to clear off all these warnings, and I'll just say, in this case, uh, f min bound of at x negative rest our function of x comma three to 
uh, 7. Enter, and we got a value of 5.363. And if we got it, and if we wanted to go ahead and find the solution of the answer at that point, that is the value. That was that maximum value. Um, and we'll go back to F plot of regular rest to confirm this. And I'm going to confirm this using, um, yeah, yeah, you know, you don't like that. Okay. And I will go ahead and um, let's do the G input. G input. All right. You can find the maximum value, which is approximately here-ish. And we'll find the minimum value, which is approximately here-ish. Enter. And you can see, sure enough, um, uh, the values for X and Y are not too dissimilar from the values that we calculated here. So this is 0 0.536, which is probably really close, and six, uh, 692. Remember, this is taken to a common value of uh, 1,000, so 692, which is pretty close to what that actually value is. So you get a sense of how you can use F min bound for uh, that problem. Now, importantly, that's not the only, uh, there's one other function we have in MATLAB, uh, in some cases a little bit more powerful, actually in most cases a little bit more powerful, and that's actually the F min search function. And what that one does is it allows you to find the minimum value for a multidimensional function. So in other words, if you have multiple um, multiple uh, independent variables that you want to find the minimum for, the global minimum or local minimum for multiple variables, then you can use the fmin search function uh, to find that. And the fmin search function is simply going to be x uh, fval just like with the other f min bound, but now in this case, the inputs again are going to be your at of your function, whatever that is, uh, your initial conditions, um, uh, initial guesses, I should say, for the function, uh, some options that you could enter into it, um, and those options uh, vary based on what you're trying to do and, and so forth, but um, uh, most time we can just leave those blank, and then you have uh, additional functions you can do like p1, p2, dot, 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 dot. And those are just calls and functions that are sent directly to this function here um, uh, for specific reasons. Most of the time you can leave all this blank and you can get away with just entering these two. Um, so, but I will give you an example of this. And what I'm going to do now is actually give you one quick example of a very simplified uh, 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 two dimensional function on this. Um, uh, variable and how you can use fmin function but in the long run uh, what I'm going to do in another video is show you how you can use the fmin search to actually do uh, nonlinear regression in MATLAB so we'll, we'll do that as well so for this final problem uh, we'll just do for this video here or the final uh, example we'll create a function that we'll just call f of x is equal to at x and now I'm going to make a two variable function. This one is going to be, uh, for, for simplicity's sake, it's going to be, uh, say, 2, and we're going to have x1, x2. So it's going to be 2, x1, uh, minus x2, x2, uh, minus, uh, uh, x, uh, 2 times x1 squared, let me think I'm entering this right correctly, uh, 2, oh, sorry, let's go back here, 2 plus x1 minus x2 um, minus, uh, do, 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 minus or plus 2 times x1 squared, I want to make sure I get this function correctly because I'm transposing it from my notes, um, plus 2 times x1 times x2 plus x2 squared. So you have two functions, you have an um plus, that's that. So you have 2 minus x1 minus x2 times 2x1 two squared plus 2x1 two 
times x2 plus 2x2 squared. So we have this rather uh, uh, an x1, x2 function. We have two variables, and we want to create this into a function that will be input an x1 and x2 variable value. Now, for this to work, for fbin search, it's not going to let you enter in a function where you do x comma y. You have two separate inputs on this and then you enter an equation that way. Uh, that's not really the way this is, Fman search is kind of built to function effectively. What you're going to want to do is have x1 and x2 be two separate variables within the vector of, uh, within the uh, vector of x. So much like we talked about in class where the, uh, the where the function was, oops, uh, where the function was, uh, uh, where your ODE function had x1 and x2 as uh, separate issues. Here we can um, close that. Sorry. Where that is going to, uh, where x1 and x2 are different variables, we can actually have it be two different indices within the x variable. So. To write this out and to not make this any more confusing than it already is, I'm going to say 2 plus, in this case, x1 will be the first position of the x vector minus x, second position of the x vector for x2, plus 2 times uh, x1 squared plus 2 times x1. Oh, how am I? I gotta clean this up. X1, 2 times x1 times x2 plus x2 squared. So let's go through this uh, to make sure this makes sense. So 2 plus x1 minus x2, yep, plus 2x1 squared, yep, plus 2 times x1 plus uh, times x2, yep, plus 2x2. Excellent. So there you go. That is the function that we're going to minimize or find the uh, local minimum. And we'll have to have a value uh, that is going to be, that we're going to have to find a balance between for the minimums. And so in this case, um, uh, we'll have to find a set of initial guesses for this. And we'll have to set a set of initial guesses for uh, the function in this case, it's going to be um, um, uh, two values. And in this case, our values are going to be x will equal to, um, say, um, negative 0.5 and 0 0.5. So those will be, can be our initial guesses. So let's go ahead and transfer this over to our command window. And you can see that. And then we'll have our x is equal to negative 5, um, 0.5, and 0.5. We have that. Now let's just test the function. So we said f of x. We'll get a single answer because it's taking both values and it gives you a single answer, which is very good. So now we can do the f min search of f um, x, being x our initial guesses. And we get an answer where negative 1 and 1 1.5 is the minimum value. And that's it. Uh, that's exactly how you use it. It's, it's identical to x min, f min's uh, bound, except now we can use not just one value or one variable. We can use multiple inputs of x, x1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. And so now, if you think about this, we can use fmin search to optimize and minimize the solution for a sum of squared errors. And if we can do that, that means we can use uh, we can use MATLAB to find for a set of variables the um, uh, linear regression or nonlinear regression for a set command. And so we will cover that uh, in another video. So beyond that, um, thank you for the time, and see you soon.